Over the course of the next few hours, I continued to uphold my natural skepticism regarding what these Zintral officials were truly after. That being said, the evidence was most certainly in their favor. Some of the military leaders seemed hesitant at first to surrender information to me, as if the alien who just got to this planet could somehow already be a Providence spy. Fortunately, Chot was able to persuade them rather quickly to fork over the goods once I gave my word that if they could prove they were being truthful, then I would do everything within my power to help them. From that promise came a seemingly endless supply of classified documents and recorded witness accounts. To call the government of Providence fanatic was an understatement. They didn't hide what they were doing. In fact, they even hacked into Zintril's main news channel at one point just to broadcast the mass execution of their soldiers. Apparently, one of the bright-eyed Zintril recruits was divinely marked, and so they made him do the killing to prove his new allegiance. It was a sickening watch, but I managed to sit through it. After another hour of tapes being shown, and even a teary-eyed testimony from one of the scientists who had survived an encounter, I decided that Chot and his colleagues had earned at least some rapport. That being said, one particular question still lingered in the back of my mind. Where's Vavi? I asked them curiously, that one Kafel who first spoke to me, why isn't she here? Seemingly caught off guard by my query, Ambassador Chot froze up for a second, his previously smooth feathers ruffling slightly upon mention of her name. That one, he uttered, his voice spiked with a measure of coldness unexpected from one so initially diplomatic. Unfortunately, she is no longer part of this project, nothing to concern yourself with. Now the alarm bells in my head were starting to go off. If there's one thing I learned from sci-fi horror movies, it's that when someone says not to be concerned, it is a very good indicator that your fears are well placed. I'm going to be honest with you, Chot. I really don't like the way you just said that. Whatever do you mean? Asked the Kaffel with a questioning toss of his head feathers. Formatting my reasoning into words took a while longer than was to be expected, resulting in a downtrodden expression from the alien diplomat who had undoubtedly defaulted to his initial inadequacy assumption. No, it isn't that. I concluded with confidence, standing up from my seat cushion and hunching myself over the table a bit to look him in the eye before continuing. I may not know your kind very well, but I sincerely doubt someone like Vavi would willingly leave your employ after discovering extraplanetary intelligence. What are you implying? Halvon queried incredulously from across the table, his tone one of genuine concern as he glanced between Chot and myself. If I'm to trust you in the nation of Zintril, I need to know you're not just disappearing people. I stated bluntly, lacking the patience to mince my words. I'd like to see her. She threatened to reveal your classified existence to the public. He began, his tone firm and unyielding, in spite of its gentle register. I do not enjoy hindering free expression, mind you. But when national security is at risk, compromises of character must sometimes be made. Right now, she's being detained in one of the facility's holding cells. Bring her here. I commanded, my prior bluntness having evolved into borderline concussive force. Well, you heard the alien. Chot shrugged, gesturing to one of the military men at his side. Bring Miss Vavi here. Our friend wishes to speak with her. Indeed, I nodded watching the fully festooned admiral exit our room at Chot's behest, returning moments later, roughly shoving along with him a handcuffed Vavi. She's not some dangerous criminal, you Tremnik. The ambassador reprimanded, allowing a touch of native tongue to slip past his lingual filter. Tremnik, from what I had learnt watching those cartoons, appeared to share a similar meaning to brute. Free her from those restraints, Admiral Kikak. She is a friend of our guest, and the minister wants him comfortable here. Shooting the ambassador an indignant glare as he produced a key ring at his side, the admiral I now understood to be Kikak quickly set to unbinding Vavi's wrists, prompting a relieved chirp from the female as she shriveled away not only from the admiral, but also Chot himself. You owe our alien friend here a debt of gratitude. Chot snarked, 
the back of his throat clicking like a velociraptor from those old movies in what I presumed was some form of laugh. It seems you've made quite the impression. Awkwardly shuffling around the diplomat, insistent, it seemed, on never getting within two meters of him, Vavi approached me and positioned herself at my side. Thank you, human. She hummed melodically, all the while staring daggers at Ambassador Chot. I refused to let them kick me out of this project, so they drugged me and locked me up. Several of the Kaffel scientists visibly recoiled in shock upon this disturbing revelation. The other diplomats, though less impacted overall, nevertheless averted their gazes from us in shame. I, on the other hand, was furious. Is this true, Ambassador? I snarled, instinctively placing myself between he and Vavi. As I said, human, it was not the sort of decision I enjoy making. Chot droned nonchalantly, rising to his talons to assume his full height. I hadn't noticed it before, but the man was at least half a meter, about 1.5 feet taller than me. Even for a kafal, the ambassador had an imposing figure, shrinking Vavi beneath his shadow. No sooner had I straightened out to my full size than did he do the opposite, hunching over as I had in order to maintain eye contact. I am truly sorry for causing concern, mind you. I hope now that you understand she is safe, we can take her back and continue this dis. Vavi stays with me, I demanded, cutting off the ambassador's words with a commanding tone I'd seldom used back home. For a moment, it seemed as though Chot was about to debate me, but the sudden clamor of agreement from those around us silenced him before he could even open his maw. I side with human. Holvon blurted, slamming his palm onto the meeting table with surprising intensity. We cannot just imprison someone who poses no immediate risk. Vavi was the first to speak with human, and so I think it is smart for her to remain by his side, at least for all her bravery. Another ambassador, one of Chot's underlings by my understanding, was next to speak up in my favor. Sir, didn't you teach us to always accommodate demands within reason? Allowing a willing civilian to remain alongside the other scientists seems very much fair. After a brief back and forth with the native-speaking military commander, Chot once again turned to address the room, this time looking somewhat more somber and less arrogant. It seems I have been foolish, human. Vavi, you have my sincerest apologies. This may be our final chance to defeat Providence, and I desperately want to succeed, so I may have outsailed the wind a bit. If you're still willing to work with us, I'm happy to reinstate you. Thank you for that apology, Chot. My friend nodded, quickly recomposing her posture and offering him a short bow of deference. I am excited to learn about human species. In fact, thinking of it now. A flicker of curiosity returned the fire to Vavi's eyes as she spun toward me and began to speak. I wanted to ask you this before, but never really got the words to, what is the name of your species, Mr. Human? Suddenly, like a bolt of lightning, the realization fell down upon me, and in a strangely comedic way, things made just a little bit more sense. Wait, you guys thought my name was human? Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe for more original content. New chapters and standalone stories uploaded weekly.